Good morning. Well, at least it's good morning for me. A question has come up from one of the mentors about closing relationships and Janice steps. So I'm going to make hopefully a very brief video on what all that means. And uh, so I'll be flipping back and forth between a few screens. So hopefully that will not be distracting for those of you who are watching it as my eyes kind of pivot from place to place. So first, I wanted to uh, define what Janus steps are. So Janus is a model of mentoring, and that's J-A-N-U-S, and probably technically two S's on the end, but it's a process that was proposed by a researcher, Dr. David Clutterbuck, which is a super fun name. So J is joint agreement, so uh, establishing mutual expectations and goals for your me mentoring relationship together as a co-creation. Assistance, so the mentors help the mentee develop their skills and knowledge by offering guidance, advice, and feedback, probably what you do every day. Then N is for new opportunities. The mentor uh, provides the mentee with new opportunities for learning and growth, such as projects or assignments or studying together. Then understanding. The mentor seeks to understand the mentee's perspective, goals, and challenges, um, maybe utilizing skills like empathy, being able to, as best you can, go over into their culture and put yourselves into their shoes and not putting, bringing in your pre-expectations, but trying to fully understand who they are. The first S then is support. The mentor provides emotional support and encouragement to the mentee as they face challenges and pursue their goals. So just being a supportive presence. And then sustainability. The mentor helps to develop the skills and resources they need to continue their personal uh, development after the mentoring relationship has ended. So helping them see the long case. So the Janus model emphasizes collaboration, empathy, and ongoing learning and uh, development within the mentoring relationship and outside of the mentoring relationship. So that's the first part. What is the Janus steps? The second part is um, what are the Janus steps with regard to uh, closing relationships. So the Janus steps with regard to closing relationships are a is a five week I think it's five weeks yeah five week process and um, I'll go through the steps of it. Week one is acknowledging that the closing of the relationship is upcoming and to plan an individual closure map. So our plan uh, we call it a map uh, that's this mentoring program was originally called MAP Mentoring, and that was because MAP stood for My Action Plan within our kind of understanding. So it's their action plan for the last five weeks of your relationship. So in that, you need to clearly acknowledge that the relationship is ending. Um, come to a closure agreement of what you're going to do. Create their individual MAP. Um, or plan for closure, uh, do a feeling acknowledgement, like something that can touch in and say, I feel sad about this uh, relationship coming to close. So there's lots of resources on the interwebs about how to process feelings or how to bring those up. But if you don't have that resource, let me know and we can find a feeling acknowledgement activity then practicing a reflection together. One uh, list, great listening reflection activity is a three to one re, uh, intentional listening. So in, in the three to one intentional listening, you could propose the prompt, how are you feeling about these next five weeks? Then literally set a timer. The mentee will talk for three minutes and you have to hold that space for the whole three minutes no matter how weird or uncomfortable it feels, then for two minutes, the mentor reflects back to the mentee what they have heard, and then the 
for one minute, the mentee then will reflect back to the mentor. So with the new understanding perhaps gained from the reflection. There's two types of reflection, by the way. So there's reflecting exactly back, and then there's reflecting with meaning. So that's pulling up. I hear you say this, and it makes me think you might mean this, and it probably is very scary for you. Things like that, that adds on perhaps a mo an emotion that you're acknowledging, but must be done in a completely humble way because you could be totally wrong. They may not feel scared. They might be super excited and hopeful. And then the reverse could also be true. So that's week one. So step two, week two, is to revisit an activity that you've done together and uh, do it again. Uh, something that you might have always talked about do the reflection activity about it when you're done with it, and then uh, finish with a reminder that you're gonna be together three more times. And again, the reflection activity, there's the intentional three, two, one activity, or there's a whatever you come up with that is um, good for your relationship together that really causes a reflection to look back and to pull meaning forward. So that's what we're kind of looking back at. So step uh, three, which is week three, of course, which is a look back and a look in. So the look back is looking at the timeline of your match together. And then if you can, uh, looking at the activities and learnings that you've had and thinking of specific things the youth have said to you that you can reflect back to them where they'll recognize their own words so maybe raising up the wisdom of the youth and then specific things that you might have said that are encouraging words or growth words to the youth and raising that up that's a kind of called a recorded verbal match backtrack so you're backtracking kind of some of those exact phrases that you might have uh, learned or covered together then if you have the opportunity to do a activity that is a look inward about who the youth is right now um, so there's uh, games that are suggested. There's um, one by a researcher whose name is Karcher and it's called Who Are You Game, which I absolutely cannot find on the internet anywhere and I will continue looking for, but the basic idea is to do an activity that defines their mission, values, and vision, right? So it could be creating their own mission statement or their values and vision. Think of themselves like a corporate entity, like who are you going to be in the world? Like Nike, who they are in the world is just do it, right? So uh, thinking about the youth, who are they wanting to be in the world? Then when they're done with that, do a reflection back on that. It could be the three, two, one reflection or any other kind of reflection. Then planning together a match symbol, which is a transitional object. So a lot of the youth that we encounter have what they call attachment wounds. So if we think about wounds, like I currently have this wound on my hand right now, which is a ridiculous cut in between my two fingers. So I need to keep it bandaged. Um, just so I won't spread my fingers apart like this and reopen that wound. So in a way, this bandage right here is the transitional object that is helping me remember that uh, doing that activity will damage me further. So the transition object, you plan it together, it helps you to cover over the attachment wound and because when they leave and you're separated from them, if it goes back to like other relationships they may or may, may have had in their life, it is a tearing away and a further wounding unless it is done carefully. Um, transitional objects, the youth gets to take with them and that could be a letter, which I highly advise as a letter to the youth uh, saying what you see in them that is so special could be uh, if you want to get them something as a marker of this time, then make a request one week 
prior to the last meeting so we can get it approved that of something you might want to gift them whether you want to gift them a special Bible or you want to gift them a book of some sort or you want a uh, I want to give them a special rosary which we have some special rosaries by the way you can do that that'd be great so uh, getting that transitional object or match symbol and then reminding them there's two more times left together so step four or week four is creating the transitional object together so if it's a letter writing you can write a letter to the youth the youth can write a letter to you and you can exchange it creating a bookmarker together um, so there's kind of two kinds of transitional objects that we're talking about one can be a gift that you give them at the end but then there's this time where you're creating something together that is meaningful to both of you so you start uh, working on that um, that's your match symbol or your transitional object you can take the time then to create a growth chart right so it could be like before we met or before we are here in time at the beginning of our relationship what are the things that you didn't know how to do and then now what are the things that you do know how to do such as knowing how to shake hands with an adult in our westernized culture because uh, it's different in every culture so being culturally appropriate is important here so in a western culture for people that are uh, acculturated that way then when you shake hands with someone now you know that you need to look people in the eyes so that's something you didn't they didn't know then that they do know that now um, or it could be I know I didn't know that I could let small things slide when they go wrong and now I know that I have the skills to not be mad at every little thing so uh, just kind of looking at a then and now kind of relationship so they can see their growth that's really important and then uh, we used to you can make a family tree sort of except we call it a relationship tree so it's looking at their relationships of wherever they're going when they go uh, where they're going next it could be to a home it could be to foster care it could be any one of a myriad of places but helping them pinpoint trusted adults or even community supports right so if they're going back to Spokane just do a Google search before you go ahead uh, go there ahead of time for youth organizations that might support them if the, you know that they're a member of a church Google that church's information and get the pastor's name and phone number and put it in there or the youth pastor's name and phone number and then at the end of your session remind them there's only one more time it's an exciting time you're getting to leave this place so then we're on to step five or week five saying goodbye and then looking forward uh, sharing time together um, maybe you can work with staff so that you can um, have some of their uh, snacks that they have in-house like a bag of uh, Takis are super popular and sharing that together or playing a game of cards together something that you do together um, then an acknowledgement sign board might be something that you could be a poster board that you work on together to put like a vision board right so this is something that is their vision and it's an acknowledgement of where they have been to what their vision is together could tap back into that mission value vision that we talked about or an acknowledgement that this is a time where this door is seeming to close but it's actually swinging open into a new place so it is that kind of moment in time where you're acknowledging that kind of change and of course a reflection it could be the three to one reflection or it could be whatever reflective activity you like to do together and then the saying goodbye right? so it within a juvenile detention setting um, you can't continue a relationship that is a one-on-one -on -one relationship 
but you can continue a, a relationship if they connect with an organization such as a church that you might be a member of then you're transitioning their relationship to you another body rather than to directly with you um, if they are going to a group home you can of course continue to mentor them in the group home I suggest you just get your own Google Voice uh, phone number and then you can download some apps where you can um, uh, be able to supply your mentee with your phone number but it's a Google Voice phone number for while they're in the group home but not to continue that past the group home together once they get home the unfortunate matter of it is they need to transition their relationship away from you to another uh, organization so back when you're creating their relationship uh, family tree if they want to like go to your church then you're transitioning your relationship with them to that church and you can put that information into their relationship family tree so then you are uh, doing that goodbye. Do goodbyes in, in a good way and honor one another. Don't commit to staying in touch. Um, it's uh, sad. It's great if you do manage to like run into one another through community contacts, but doing a continued relationship is a pre-violation and will get you in trouble if it is observed by other people so um, and then if that's doing happening and you're not being observed by other people in an organization and you're not being held accountable that's being something being done under the cover of darkness which I don't personally feel like is ever a good way to operate so those are the five steps for a Janus model of mentoring that leads to a good closing. And again, the Janus model is, uh, let's see, the joint agreement, assistance, new opportunities, understanding, support, and sustainability. So that's the basic Janus overall um, relationship guide. And then those five steps for five weeks of closing a relationship, acknowledging the ending, creating an individualized map for the future, uh, revisiting a special activity, looking back, looking in, creating a transitional object, which you've already discussed back here, and then the final one where you're saying goodbye. Um, the mentoring um, literature suggests having a meal together, and so, I don't think that's possible within a juvenile detention setting. However, we can always ask. It, there's something that is about eating together that brings a humanity and a connectedness for us all. I mean, that's why churches have potlucks and communities have potlucks, right? Because we connect over food. So I hope this is helpful. If you have any other questions, please reach out. My number is 425-531-1756, and I will gladly discuss this with you. Take care.